In this video, we're going to be walking through the RevoScan software process when dealing with car scans, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we are going to just take a look at the RevoScan software, and we're going to talk about some of the general settings that we want to use when we're dealing with car scans. Now, I know a lot of people have been asking for more details on the Morocco scanner, and I'm still waiting on some supplies to get here before I do another video. This was scanned with the Morocco, and this was part of the scans that we talked about during the overview video. But I want to just make sure we understand the general process when we're dealing with those scans after the fact. And if you're using a range or if you're using an Inspire or really any of the other scanners, it, the process is going to be generally the same. So we're looking at large objects. So in this case, we're going to deal with part of a car fender. And those large objects also have some small details. We have some edging that we want to preserve. So when you get a scan that looks like this, at the start, it looks pretty bad. There's a lot of noise. If we rotate this around, you can see that there are going to be points out in space and we don't have a smooth surface to work with. But that's okay because we're going to go through the process. We're going to take a look at these settings and figure out how we can make the most even out of a noisy scan like this. So to get started, we have to use Fusion. Now, this is going to take the points and when they're within a certain distance, and for this model, we're going to use the smallest number possible. In this case, it's 0.45. And it's going to take a look at those points. And when we zoom in, we can see that in some instances, we've got points that are pretty close together. In other instances, they're spaced relatively far apart. So when we do the fusion process, what it's actually looking at is those distances between points, and then it'll merge those points together. Now, this is the first step in the process. And the reason we're using such a small number is because we've captured a lot of points. The Morocco scanner and the other scanners in the RevoPoint lineup are using an IR structured light. And this means that the pattern that it's displaying on your object, in this case a car fender, is invisible to the naked eye. We can't see what it is, unlike a typical structured light scanner where you can actually see the grid and the different parallel lines. This we can't see. But even though we can't see it, it's still creating those lines on the object and it's sort of recording that data with its IR cameras. With that process, depending on how you angle the scanner or move it, or depending on its position in space, whether it's closer or further away, you are going to get different results. You might get points that are overlapping. You might get points really close together. So that's why this is the first step in the process, and it allows us to unlock the rest of our point cloud editing tools. Now that the points have been processed, if we zoom in, we shouldn't see any that are within that range of 0.45 millimeters. So we have a more consistent point layout. Now, that's not to say that we don't still have points that are close together and far away, but it just helps clean things up a bit. Now, I will say that the scan data in this area here is a bit noisy, and this is going to be based on the direction of the scanner when we were scanning. Uh, that's okay, because what we're going to do here is we're going to cut some of this away. Now that we have our point cloud editing tools, I'm going to use the polygon tool, and I just want to cut away some of this fender that I don't really need. Because it's only for an example in this video, I don't really need the entire thing. But I'm going to keep, let's say, down to here. We'll cut into the wheel arch. And I'll just come all the way up and back over. And that's the section I want to keep. So I'm going to invert and hit delete. And then hold down control and the left mouse button should let us rotate. Um, whenever you're in the selection tools, you have to hold down control and the left mouse button or command on a Mac. Otherwise, it'll actually select things. So. We're going to go ahead and just chop away some of this. Again, I'm not looking at capturing the entire thing. All I was really interested in is just getting the side of it. So we'll delete that, zoom out a little bit, we'll catch this piece here. And let's see what we have left. All right, so we've got some noisy data. There's some stuff floating around from the tire, but that's okay. Because the next step in our process is isolation. I'm going to leave the default 15% and click detect. And what this is doing now is it's taking a look at points that are outside of the overall conglomeration of points. So it's going to select noise that's above our scan. You can see the areas where the scanner angle was not quite right. If it was at too much of an angle, not perpendicular, we get a lot of noise. And this is because as the, the IR lines are projected onto the surface, we get noise that's bouncing back. It's not getting a clean scan. So you can see that we don't really have great data here. But we've got pretty good data everywhere else. A couple little holes in the scan. 
And this generally tells me that I should spend more time on the scan, pointing the scanner perpendicular to those surfaces. And in reality, it was probably perpendicular to the rest of these, and I wasn't really focusing there. And that's kind of what you end up getting. This, if I was trying to use this scan, I would go back and I would rescan it, or I would take a look at some of the other scans that I have. So now that we've got this step, the next step is to do overlap detection. I'm gonna leave the default one millimeter here. And basically what this is looking at is, are there any points overlapping the current isolated structure? So you can see here that it did select some, and this means that there's a point that is external and it's sort of over top of another point. So I'm gonna apply, which will delete all of those. And that'll clean up a little bit more of that noise. Now, once we take these points into the meshing stage, it's going to do some averaging. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we get the cleanest and most dense point cloud as possible to give us the most level of detail downstream. Now, if I didn't have any harder edges here, I probably wouldn't worry as much about it, but this being an 80s car, we've got some harder edges and we need to retain those if we were gonna design a part for this. So the next step of smooth, this is where it was a little counterintuitive for me. When I was talking to uh, some of the people at the RevoScan team, they were saying for models like this, we wanna increase the strength but decrease the number of times. Now, basically what this is doing is it's gonna, it's gonna take a look at the overall points, the position of those points, and it's gonna begin moving or averaging them. Now, you can play around with this because the software does have an undo. So you can kick the strength way up, you can apply it, and you can apply it multiple times. But what we're looking for here is we wanna make sure as we rotate it around that we're not losing detail on these edges because once we lose detail on these edges at the point stage, we're not gonna get it back at the mesh stage. So make sure that you do still have that level of detail. And once again, you can apply this multiple times and we can always use undo. So it's looking pretty good. I still can see that edge there and it's looking okay. Now there is one more option here called simplify. Now, this is something I generally would not use for a model like this. You can play around with it. Remember, there is an undo. I'm gonna go ahead and just do 50% and apply it so we can see. But it's gonna take the points and it's gonna begin reducing them. And I'm, because we have an undo, I'm gonna do this again so you can start to see. But essentially what's happening is it's gonna begin removing points, getting fewer and fewer points. Now in reality or in theory, you might think that this would give you a cleaner mesh, less bumps. But what we're actually doing is we're gonna be losing a lot of detail. Now there will be a point where this works pretty well depending on the shape of the thing you're scanning. But for us, I wanna undo it. I'm gonna keep as dense as possible the points. And that way when I go to the meshing stage, it'll be able to have as much data as possible. Which brings us to the next step and that's meshing. Now the meshing slider is gonna be different based on the project and the scanner that you're using. This number will be different based on the point distances, which is affected by things like the fusion process, the smoothing process. But basically what we're gonna do is have the smallest grid size. So the grid size of 0.52 millimeters means that we're having extremely small triangles, meaning the overall element size in our mesh is gonna be much larger. That means it's gonna be harder to deal with in CAD. Downstream, a large mesh file means its processing time takes more. It means that it's harder for us to do anything with it, but getting a higher density mesh means capturing more of those details. Now this is a big sort of broad shape, but it does have those hard edges, which means that we do need to try to keep a higher level of detail or a higher mesh element count to retain those edges. So we can see now we have a mesh. This is a pretty messy edge and that's partially because I didn't scan around the edge, but even though we brought it through the process as points, we can come back and we can clean this up. Because we have a really dense mesh, that means that the edges are going to be nice and clean. So when we cut it and trim it, we should get nice good results. So as we rotate this around, the areas where we were missing data, where we kind of had little pockets, you can see that this is a bit rougher. The areas where we had more points, the larger surfaces here, you can see that this looks better than this does down here. Now, there is still a lot of sort of texturing that looks like it's going on here, but the main thing I'm focusing on are gonna be these edges. The detail around these tighter transitions, that's the stuff that I wanna make sure that I have at this level. 
Everything looks pretty good. You can run isolation and fill holes and all that sort of stuff, but I don't really need to. I wanna to go to the smoothing process. And once again, with smoothing process, we're gonna take a look at a higher strength value and lower number of times. This is not universally true. So remember that you do have undo. But keep in mind that what this is doing is it's taking a look at areas where there are bumps. So for example, these bumps here, and the higher strength value is gonna push those bumps down. But there is a second side effect that we need to be aware of, and that's these edges. So let's go ahead and apply this and see what it looks like. So as we take a look at this, it's starting to filter these, but we are going to start to see a reduction in edge quality. So if I undo this and I redo it, there's not a big difference that happened here, but just like with the points, we can apply this multiple times and you can use undo and redo as much as you want. So it's a good idea to play around with it increase the number of times and decrease the strength or decrease the um, number of times and increase the strength and just take a look at your own results. What we want to do is get the best possible solution before we take this to CAD. So I'm going to do this one more time, smooth it out just a little bit. And once again, keep in mind, we used the smallest number for the fusion process, so keeping the closest spread of points. We use the smallest number for the meshing process, meaning that we've got the largest number of triangles, which means that we're retaining as much of this data as possible. So when we take a look at this, as I mentioned, there are still some problems, the bumps here, which really means that I should have done a better job of scanning, but I'm really focused on these edges. So I think everything looks good. What I'm gonna do is export this, and Let's go ahead and we'll save this as a RevoScan demo. So in Fusion, we're gonna import the mesh directly into Fusion. Remember that the RevoScan software doesn't have a coordinate system alignment option. So when we're bringing a scan in, the orientation is gonna be based on the first frame that you scan. So if you start scanning a car with the scanner perpendicular to the ground, that is going to be the orientation of the overall mesh. So that's something to keep in mind. We still are gonna just do some basic manual rotation in here. The larger number of triangles or you know, the, the denser the mesh file is, the longer the import process is gonna take. Uh, so as I said, I don't really care too much about whether or not this is perfect. I'm just gonna select the mesh body. I'm gonna use M for move and just rotate it till it's approximately right. Now, one thing that we can see is even on my computer, this is kind of laggy. It's, it's hard for us to rotate this around. And if I display the triangles using control and six, then we can see that we've got a bunch of tiny little triangles. Now, all those triangles, if we right click on the mesh and we go to its properties, we can see how many triangles we're dealing with. Now, remember this is a, a section of a fender. It's not even a whole fender. If we have an entire car with mesh density of this size, it's gonna drag the software to its knees. So we can see that we've got what, six million facets. So that's quite a bit, that's a lot for this file. So what I wanna do is I want to smooth it and I wanna remesh it. This is where we start to, we have to really think about the tools that we have. So for example, if we do a remesh, we can decrease the density and we can use shape preservation but keep in mind that when we use things like smoothing, we don't have edge or shape preservation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna preserve sharp edges. I'm not gonna turn on preview, but I'm gonna use shape preservation at pretty high, and I'm gonna decrease the density. I'm gonna take it pretty far down, 0 0.061, select this mesh body and say okay. Again, the number of triangles that you have in your mesh is gonna dictate how long this process takes. You can have a super fast computer, but it's still gonna come down to how well whatever software you're using is gonna deal with those mesh elements. A dedicated mesh program works quite a bit quicker than a CAD program, because CAD programs just generally aren't built to handle meshes. All right, now that it's done, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties and see what we reduce the mesh to. If we take a look at our mesh, now we're sitting at 940,000. So we went from 6 million to 940,000. And if I hide the edges with control and four, we still have the detail. We can still see the edges that we need. And we can see that we still got sort of that textured look. 
Now, in reality, this is going to be good enough for us to design the parts that we need because we're not going to be pushing all the way down to a, a really fine subdivided model to this, but there is a little bit more that we can do. Now, the smoothing process, again, is going to be dependent on the number of mesh elements. I'm going to use it set to one. Generally, I recommend doing smoothing first before doing the remesh because having the larger number of triangles means that we're going to retain those edge details. As soon as we start reducing the number of triangles we have, then the edge details are going to begin to uh, sort of diminish our effects. So I didn't do it here because we had over 6 million triangles and it's just going to take quite a bit of time. Smoothing on 900,000 is a bit easier. So when we take a look at this, we still have our edge detail. And if I bring back our triangles and we zoom in, we can still see that we have a pretty uniform grid of triangles. Now, generally what we would like to see if we were dealing with a mesh that was converted, we would have a higher triangle count in these corners and we would have lower in the larger faces. So this is where a dedicated mesh program really helps out because the tools that we have for things like reducing the overall count are going to be limited in the fact that we're gonna have a harder time preserving those edges. We can do a reduce, and in this case, I'll do 25% and we'll take a look. But again, what we're likely gonna to begin to notice is that some of these edges will lose their resolution. So this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. And if we take a look at our properties one more time, we can see that we've gone from originally over 6 million to now we're at 235,000. So this is a much easier mesh to handle. There's more that we could do, but we still have that same level of detail that we need. And if I hide my edges, we can see that the overall mesh looks pretty smooth. So I'm happy with these results, but keep in mind that the more that we do, so the more smoothing we do, the more remeshing that we do, the more reducing that we do, the detail is going to begin to, to get lost. So you have to be careful with it. I do like to use things like smoothing before I remesh. Again, because of the edge preservation, the larger number of triangles will help preserve that shape. But in this case, I just wanted to go through and show those tools. So at this point, if you have any questions, please let me know. I do plan on doing another video. We're gonna talk about scanning prep. We're gonna be scanning a car fender and we're gonna be scanning a, a compressor housing for a turbo. So we're gonna be looking at larger, bigger, flatter objects and then we're gonna look at smaller detailed objects. So we are gonna do a follow on with the Morocco as soon as I get the scan spray here, which is unfortunately taking forever, but um, we will still do that follow up video and it should be sometime hopefully next week. So if you have any questions on anything you saw here, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.